Come on, somebody. Did you come to praise the name of the Lord? Scripture tells us, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Can we take just a second and praise that name? Hallelujah. Man, it sure feels good to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday. Don't know about you, but I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord today. Excited for what God has planned for His people. I don't know what you've come expecting, but I've come to tell you that He is here, and He's here for you. Whatever you stand in need of today, there's nothing too big, and there's nothing too small for for the God that I serve. Do you believe that this morning? Let's open this service up with prayer today. Prayer still works. Prayer is still a very effective tool that the people of God have. You know, a lot of people might abuse prayer, just constantly bringing forth need and petitions and worries and all these different things. But you know, sometimes it does us some good if we just talk to the Lord. Tell Him how good He's been. I don't know about you today, but I'm thankful what God's done for me. I'm thankful that I know Him this morning. Let's remember uh, brother and sister Cutshaw, Gary Sellers, Brother Ricky Butler, Sister Hudson, Paul Rollison, Eli Johnson, Don Dotson, Brian West, Jonathan Ryder, Patrick Clements, and let's keep remembering George, uh, George uh, Lottie, Sister Mary's husband. I went completely blank thinking about it. 
She texted me this morning early uh, asking the church to keep him in our prayers. He needs a touch in his health today. Uh, and I have a special need I'm going to bring forth before the church this morning. Uh, I have a co-worker and I requested prayer for this young, young child several months ago uh, by the name of Grayson Cox. I work with his father and I believe he's around four or five years old. He had open heart surgery uh, not even six months ago. That was the second surgery. He come down very sickly a couple weeks ago, long story short. They do some testing. Um, that valve that they replaced for the second time is back leaking. Um, he has a lot of infection. He's a very sick child. Um, it's put this family in a tough spot to do with work and different things. Uh, this week they're preparing to take him to Pittsburgh. He will be having another open heart surgery um, on the 24th. And I know this is not on schedule, but I believe that we need to take a moment and pray for this child. If this was you in, his, in that family's shoes, you would want people binding together faith believing. Now, I'm crazy, and y'all know that. But I'm crazy enough to believe when they go in on July the 24th to do open heart surgery, that I serve a God that's going to say, there's nothing wrong with this child. Now, I don't know if you still believe in the same God that I do, but Scripture tells us He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if we can, let's start prayer out believing that God can touch this child. We don't know God's plan or His will, but most importantly, I want God's hand in this situation. Right now, every eye closed. God, we come before you for this special need. God, you see this family in the time in this chaotic situation that we may not understand. But God, you are the author and the finisher today. You are Alpha and Omega. You are still a way maker. God, I pray right now that healing would be imparted where that child is. You see that valve. God, I'm crazy enough to believe that you can completely make that child whole. God, let us have childlike faith today. You said the faith of a grain of a mustard seed. God, it can move the mountain. You said where two or three would be there in your name, you would be in the midst. God, I'm proclaiming healing. I'm crazy enough to believe that you are still a rewarder of those that diligently seek you, God. We come before you for every need today, ever spoken and unspoken alike. God, you are able. You can move the mountain. You can touch every mind and every heart in this very service. God, move us out of the equation and let your power fall in this service. Come on, can we give them a hand clap of praise this morning? Come on, can we go ahead and open up and believe uh, that God is still uh, who He says He is. Uh, he is still the great uh, I Am. Uh, he is still the beginning. Uh, he'll still be the ending. Uh, he is still Alpha and He is still Omega. Let's worship the Lord this morning.
to a song this week, and it was called Never Lost. It's a decently popular song, Never Lost a Battle. My favorite line in this song, and it resonated, I don't know why, so much with me this week. The line that said, who are you, great mountain, that you should not bow low? Who are you? And it, it, I don't know, to me, I was just thinking in our terms, who do you think you are? That you can stand up against our God. What kind of mountain do you think you are that you are not worthy to bow low to our God? So I want to remind us this morning that it doesn't matter what that mountain is or what it looks like. Because who are you, great mountain? My God is greater than any, any mountain that would stand in front of us. who are hurting and hoping help is on the way in these battles and these struggles when fear is chasing after me whatever mountain I am facing I will lift my hands and sing. Oh, I believe, I believe in miracle power, in a wonder-working God. I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. He's working wonders in my heart. I belong to a loving Father. Now He calls me His own. When it feels like I won't be. struggle, so much pain, when I start singing hallelujah, I say goodbye to every change, I believe in miracle power, in a wonder working God, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, He's working wonders in my heart. I belong to a loving father, now he calls me his own, when it feels like I won't make it, I 
aren't you thankful for that wonder working power come on aren't you thankful for the power of the Lord I'll be very brief with this but the Lord began to lay this scripture on my heart James chapter 2 and it begins at verse 17 it says even so faith if it hath not works is dead being alone Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. But I want to convey this to the church this morning in verse 19. Thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. The devil even believes. He believes that He is God. He believes that He is all-knowing. He believes He is all-powerful. And what He says He will do, He believes it is done. Some of us is not even on the same level as Satan himself. Because even the devil believes in who God is. Come on, y'all need to hear what this preacher saying this morning. If God said He's going to bring you out of it, guess what? It's already done. If He said He's going to heal you, guess what? It's already done. If they believe He can receive, receive it this morning. Even the devil believes. You think you're doing pretty good because you believe. So does the devil. How about we start putting works with our faith? We, we, we sang all day long about the power, but yet when something comes knocking on the door, uh-oh. give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. I bet y'all wish I would have stayed gone. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Go ahead and be seated. We're going we're gonna to shift just real briefly. I'm not hindering nothing. We're going to move right along today. Uh, at this time, if our ushers will be making their way, we're going to do our tithes and our offerings. Uh, kingdom kids can be dismissed, ages 5 through 12. Go ahead, get your kids. Brother Caden's there in the corner. Uh, one quick announcement. <clears throat> Sister Tammy and her uh, Sunday school class has been so nice and has put together, to, uh, together a care package. Um, these will be given after service in the foyer. Uh, but they're not for everybody. I know, that's sad. But if you are 65 and older, they have put you a gift out in the foyer together. Can we give them a hand clap this morning for doing that? Hey, you know, it's not all about the children. It's not all about the middle age. we got to remember our elderly as well. They've paved the way for us. Can we give our elderly a hand clap? Thank you to all of our elders today. Go ahead and stand at this time so you can dig a little bit bit deeper this morning, get some more money out of your pocket. This is when we're going to give our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Give unto Him as He's given to you. Men of music, if you will.
we say it together? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's say it loud. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. There's no name greater than his name. No God like our God. Nothing deserves our praise but his name. Let's clap our hands unto the Lord and thank him. God, we give you praise today. He is so good to us. So glad you are here today. I'm looking forward to what God is doing in this house and what He is going to do today through His Word. You know, worship, praise, prepares the heart of man to receive the Word of God. I will be honest, I've seen uh, people over the course of my ministry, they, I see them be moved in worship moved in worship service and I'll just be blunt be honest I often find them absent during the preaching of the word praise may precede the victory but the word of God is what sets at liberty the captive it's what binds up the broken hearted it heals the oppressed And as thankful as I am for praise and worship, can I remind you, there's nothing like the Word of God. For it is the Word that saves us and sets us free. Can we thank Him one more time for what we feel? So glad you're here in the house of the Lord today. Welcome to the Gospel Tabernacle. This is your first time. We're honored you're here. Let's give our guests a hand clap. Your hands are going to be tired when you get done here today. It's okay. You got the rest of the week to uh, massage them and and get them ready for next week. I don't ask you to clap your hands much uh, except on Sundays and Wednesdays. Let's turn, if we can, to the book of Psalms, chapter 20. I'm going to jump right in it today. I believe somebody's going to leave this house victorious this morning. Do you believe it? Do you believe somebody can leave here in liberty? I believe it today. Psalms, chapter 20. Uh, Let's begin with uh, verse 1 today. The Bible says, The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Selah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation. And in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. For the Lord, fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. And he will hear him from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses. But we will remember... The name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen. Somebody say, they are brought down and fallen. But we are risen and we stand upright. I want to preach with the help of the Holy Ghost this morning with the title, The Key to Victory. The Key to Victory. To victory. If you want to see the Holy Ghost move in a mighty way, I wish you'd lift your hands in this house and you lift your voice and ask God to have His way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you for what you're doing in this house and in this hour. God, I believe in the wonder-working power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the spoken Word of God. And so I pray today, God, that every captive would leave this house set free. God, I pray that you would do a work in this house that cannot be done with man's hands, but only by the wonder-working power of the name of Jesus. We'll give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. If you were fighting a battle, if you were in an army, if you were, uh, we'll take it down this, if you were in a snowball fight, if you were in a competition, maybe some of you are uh, competitive like I am, you're always looking for a way to win. 
without cheating. Maybe on the edge. But you're always looking for a way to win. I don't know about you, but I don't like to lose. It's just the way I am. This, uh, the, you know, I, I believe any winner doesn't like to lose. Because if they didn't care to lose, you know, they wouldn't, I don't think they would give it their all. So I'm going to do everything within my power, whether it's a basketball game, whether it's a video game, whether it's a, a church youth outing and we're playing the game there, it's still no mercy. There's no mercy uh, in me uh, when it comes to the games. And if somebody whispers in my ear and says, let me tell you how to get an extra advantage on your opponent or let me give you a key to victory. I'm going to use it. Amen. Why? Because I want to win. And so I, I think that I'm, I hope I am in a congregation of people who want to win. I right, hope I'm in a congregation of people that uh, want to be on the winning side. Yeah. Because if you come in not being, wanting to be on the winning side, you come to the wrong house. Because we're, we're winners around here. Not because who we are, not because of our talents, our abilities. But we're winners because of who our God is. If you were an army general, maybe if somebody come to you and said, Look, I'm going to give you a key to the victory of this battle, I would say you would take it. Because a man is known by his victories. In the Old Testament, you'll find throughout the entire course, the Old Testament, there were constant battles. And throughout the Old Testament, you'll find there's a lot of wins, but there's also a lot of losses. But here's what I, I find across the entire book. That any time that God was fighting for anybody, they never lost. So you know what that tells me? God's undefeated. I believe, uh, it's in, I don't remember the exact scripture, but talks about in the year that King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up. It says his train filled the temple. From study, the kings on the back of their uh, garment, if you will, they had a train that they would wear with the victories tied within one another. Every time they got a victory, they added a piece of garment. And when he looked up and he saw God on his throne and in his temple. He said his train was not an ordinary train. It wasn't anything like he had seen before. But as big as the temple was, and we don't know how big the temple was. I can't tell you. As big as the temple was, he said the train filled the temple. His victories filled the temple. I don't know if you know it or not, but we serve a victorious God, an undefeated God. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 20 tells us this. It was giving them a charge in the book of Deuteronomy. It said, when thou goest out to battle against thine enemies. This is talking to the children of Israel, the people of God. When you go out to battle against your enemies and you see horses and you see chariots and you see a people more than thou. When you see the horses, the chariots, When you see all the great multitude of people that is against you, it's going to come into your heart to be scared. You're going to be intimidated. But he said, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God is with thee, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. The same God who started a good work in you, The same God who answered your prayer the first time. The same God who set you free the first time is also going to be the same God that when you're standing in front of a circumstance and a situation that looks like it's going to destroy you and wipe you off the face of the earth, that is going to be the same God that's going to be with you when it looks like all odds are against you went on to say and it shall be when you are come nigh unto the battle that the priest shall approach and speak unto the people it helps us all to have a little pep talk you know because God knows what's in our heart 
Knows what we're thinking. Knows when we're on the edge of giving up and the edge of quitting. I I find it so amazing that there's been so many times I've been wishy-washy in my life and I walked into a church service and it was like God used that preacher to preach me out of my defeat, preach me out of my state of quitting, convince me to get up and go again. Why? Because God wants us to be victorious. So he said that priests are going to approach you because he knows what's in your heart. And he's going to say, Hear, O Israel, ye approach this day unto battle against your enemies. Let not your hearts faint. Fear not and do not tremble. Neither be ye terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies and to save you. I'm no priest today, but I am called of God to preach to you as a people. And I want to stand before you today and tell you don't let your hearts be faint and don't fear, neither tremble or don't be terrified by what is in front of you and all around you because God is with you and God will fight for you and God will save you if you will trust in him. Zechariah chapter 4 says this, Then the angel who talked with me returned and woke me up like someone awakened from sleep. And he asked me, What do you see? And I said, I see a solid gold lampstand with a bowl at the top and seven lamps on it with seven channels to the lamp. And also there are two olive trees by it and one on the right of the bowl and the other on its left. And I asked the angel who talked with me, and I said, What are these, my Lord? And he answered and said, Do you not know what these are? I said, No, my Lord. He wasn't a smart aleck. He could have said, I wouldn't ask you if I knew what they were. He said, No, my Lord, I don't know what they are. So he said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. For what are you, mighty mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become level ground. He told him, I've got a word for Zerubbabel. And I want to let them know that there is a mountain that stands before them this day. But don't be intimidated. But better yet, don't try to move it on your own accord because there's going to be one way that that mountain is going to be moved and it's not going to be by your might and it's not going to be by your power. But if you want that mountain to be moved, it's going to come by my spirit. I've walked into this house and I want to tell somebody today it's not going to be by your might or by your power that you prevail in this present world but there's only going to be one way that you and I prevail and that's going to be by the spirit of the living God. And I know that may not help a lot of you but for those who are tired of living in defeat for those who are tired of trying time and time again and not seeing any results I come to tell you if you want to see a mountain move today you're going to have to do it through the spirit of the living God. No shovel can dig it down. Hey it's only going to come through the power of the spirit of God feel I'm talking to a people and I'm guilty as well as so many in this house. We are people that try and attempt and work to do things on our own accord and our own power. 
But can I tell you, there was never an army great enough in the children of Israel that would have defeated all of their enemies. It had nothing to do with their swords. It had nothing to do with their spears. It had nothing to do with their training. It had nothing to do with their artillery. It had nothing to do with any of that. But it came because they were in covenant with God. And I want to tell somebody in this house today, I come to give you a key to victory and it lies within the spirit of the living God. If you want to see your enemies flee from you seven ways, you're going to have to do it through the spirit of God. Acts chapter 1 tells us this. The former treatise have I made, O Theopolis, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach. Until the day in which he was taken up after he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not part but from Jerusalem. But wait... For the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. I'm reminded of that promise that he gave the children of Israel. As long as you stay in covenant with me, you're always going to be victorious. As long as you're obedient unto me and my commandments. As long as you let me lead this army. Everything that stands before you is going to have to crumble. But why? Because that's my promise to you. But in the New Testament, God wanted to send another promise to mankind. For he said, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. When they four were come together, they asked of him saying, Lord... Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Somebody needs to hear me. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. It's time and high time. We quit trying to do things our way and handle things on our own accord. It's simple as this. Let's start using what God has given us for our victory. Sounds simple to some. But if we would depend more on that, when life circumstances and mountains stand before us, instead of depending on everything else in this world to give us through, we would take hold of that spirit that is living inside of us. It surprises me so much and I've been guilty of it that I have lived so many days in defeat when I had victory already living inside of me. I was living in the defeat but I had victory living inside of me but you can only let the spirit Do its work if you'll allow it to. You're going to have to let it work inside of you. That's why I think it's possible for even people that have the Spirit of God to be caught in depression and to be caught in anxiety and to be caught even in chains of bondage and have spirits that come and try to attach itself to them. That's why we've got so many issues even in the modern day church because we are not using the power that God intended us to use. If you want the key to victory, it's as simple as this. Let the Holy Ghost work in you the way God intended it to work in you. Let the Holy Ghost have its way 
in your life. Quit depending on your intelligence. Quit depending on your wisdom and what you know. Let the Holy Ghost do what the Holy Ghost wants to do. And that is to make you victorious even in this present world. Book of Ephesians tells us, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The only way you and I are going to be strong is if we do it through Him. And the only way we're going to have power is if we depend on His power and His Strength. If you want to make it as a believer, you're going to have to use the spirit that God has given us. You can't make it without it. You've got to have it. You've got to have it. Would you lift your hands in this house? I got a breakthrough here this morning. I'm trying to get somebody out of your constant state of defeat this morning. But if you want to get out of that state of defeat, you're going to, some of you just need to be rebaptized with the gift of the Holy Ghost. You need to let the Holy Ghost work in you here this morning. He is not meant for us to live in defeat. God has not meant for you to live in defeat. He's not meant for you to live below and the enemy standing up above you, getting everything over your head. But when He filled you with His Spirit, He filled you with victory. Because what was it? It was the Spirit. That raised Jesus from the dead the third day. Because a man can't stay in defeat with the spirit of victory living inside of him. You trusted him for your salvation. Now trust him to get through this storm you're in today. Put the oars up. Put the buckets up. You tried that long enough. Let His Spirit save you from your turmoil and your distress and the things you're going through today. You shouldn't be having to deal with all these things without a victory in sight. What is it? Is it a... Is it an addiction to pornography? Is it is it an addiction to, to lustful thoughts? Is it an addiction to a, a substance? It, it, what is it? What is What are you going through right now that you have tried over and over and over again to get the handle on, but you can't do it on your own? Because if you could, you still wouldn't be facing it. Can I tell you, The Holy Ghost still has the power in this very instant to take away any addiction, to take away any abuse that's been done to you in the past that still got His hands on you and things that's in your mind that you can't let go of and constantly torment you. Can I tell you the Holy Ghost still has the power to drive those things far from you. No, we may not be facing an enemy with swords and spears and horses and chariots, but I don't know about you but I'm fighting against a whole lot in my own self and I know this I can't make it without the Holy Ghost it's been the Holy Ghost that's helped me overcome it's been the Holy Ghost that's got me through my darkest days I come to remind somebody in this house this morning if you can't get through you need to call on the Holy Ghost to get you through Power. You gotta do it in the Lord. In the power of His might, then it tells us to put on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil because He ain't given up. Somebody needs to hear that. He ain't giving up. When I'm baptized in Jesus' name, I read my Bible every night. I pray every night. He's 
still not given up. If we want to make it through, we're going to have to put on the armor and say, I'm going to war against everything that the enemy is going to use to destroy us. I want to do it God's way. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He did not give us his spirit to to wrestle against flesh and blood. We could do that in the flesh. But he gave us his spirit because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we are fighting against principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world. And against spiritual wickedness in high places. We're wrestling against some big dogs. We're wrestling against some powerful strongholds that are in the atmosphere. But because of the power of the Holy Ghost it doesn't matter how great the wickedness and how great the power there is no power that is greater than the power of the Holy Ghost Do I need to say it again? There's no addiction that's stronger than the power of the Holy Ghost Adversary, I want to tell you, you have been defeated by the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Ghost. We, the people of God, stand here today proclaiming that we will be victorious. If you want to be victorious, I wish you'd clap your hands to the Lord. I've come too far. I've fought with too much. I've had too many people walk away from me. But I'll tell you this. Let them all go and let them all wait. This spirit that the Holy Ghost that's inside of me is greater than anything that I'll ever lose. Greater than anything that I'll ever win. It's given me the power to live godly and holy and righteous in this present world. It gives us power when we want to work in the flesh and sin is going to be brought about by our flesh. The Bible tells us that none can sin as long as they walk in the Spirit. As long as the Spirit is working inside of them. You want to get out of the sin in business? Let the Holy Ghost work in you. Come on. You keep walking in the same sin and falling back into the same old junk you've been dealing with for years. Let the Holy Ghost burn out everything in you and only let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn inside of you. Let it burn inside of you. We're wrestling against things that we cannot see. It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. Got to put on that belt of truth. Put it on. Buy the truth. Sell it not. It's going to be on my hip at all times. This ain't for sale. This truth of this gospel is not for sale. And have on the breastplate of righteousness. Let your heart be filled with righteousness. Let that breastplate protect your heart. Nothing else can penetrate that heart if it's already covered with a breastplate of righteousness. And it goes on to tell us, let your feet be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Let your feet be ready at any time to tell somebody about this glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Your feet ain't got a chance to walk into hell when you got the gospel of Jesus Christ on your feet. You can't walk into entrapment if you got the gospel of Jesus Christ on your feet. Above all, somebody say above all. You take hold of that shield of faith. You gotta have faith, folks. If you're gonna make it, you gotta have faith. You gotta believe you're gonna win when everything around you saying you're gonna die and go to a devil's hell. Hey, you gotta take hold of that faith and believe that he that spoke in it is gonna keep his word. And he that told me he's gonna be with me, I know that he is with me. Didn't say there wouldn't be fiery darts of the wicked coming your way. But by faith, by faith, by faith, and by the strength of God, you're able to keep those things away from you. You're able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Didn't say the battle wouldn't be hard. Didn't say it wouldn't rage and you wouldn't look out and say, God, how can I make it? How can I make it on this battlefield? Everybody's falling around me. My son, take hold of that shield of faith. Stand the test of time. You've got to see victory and take the helmet of salvation. How many people is dealing with those thoughts? You can't make it. I'm after you. I'm coming after you. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy your family. I'm going to take your kids. Come on. I'm going to ravage you. I'm going to tear you to shreds. Everything's going wrong. Nothing's going right. You're forsaken. You ain't even got any friends anymore. Everybody's left your side. Oh, but put on that helmet of salvation. Let me protect this mind. Let me always have a ready mind to know that though the world may forsake me because I have salvation, I have it all. And take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and pray always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. How can you pray always with the Spirit if you don't have the Spirit? It's important when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Those things which cannot be understood because that's that communication between you and all those groanings of the Spirit when they're interceding and, and praying in the Spirit. Preacher, all I pray is words of English. I always know when I'm praying. I'm always conscious of it. My friend, you need to reach a point in prayer when you tell God, I want to pray in the Spirit. I want to have a language with you, God. I want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Friends, I want to tell you today, the only way we're going to make it to heaven is by His Spirit. By His Spirit. By His Spirit. I still believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking with other tongues as the Spirit gives. The utterance doesn't come by us but by the Spirit in us. It comes. I don't believe it's an extra blessing. don't believe it's something added. I believe this is our tool to get out of here. We got to pray always with prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And listen to this. And watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. If we want victory, we're going to have to decide I'm going to prepare for war that I may succeed in this present world. Closing with some verses out of the book of 1 Corinthians. It says, Behold, I. Show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortality, 
So in this corruptible head shall I put on incorruption, this mortal immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? The sting of death, the ever-present sting of death. And O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. It's that constant sting of death. I know it's coming. I know it's quickly making its way to me in the grave where I'm going to be. It's going to have victory over me. But verse 57 says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The same Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is the same Spirit that's going to get us out of here. The grave could not contain Him because victory was living inside of Him. Somebody needs to hear that today. The grave cannot contain and cannot kill and cannot defeat a saint of God that has the spirit of victory living inside of them. That's why it says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I come to tell a saint of God, now is not time to quit. Now is not time to lay down your arms and say this is a time to get stagnant and complacent. This is a time for us to stand when everybody else is falling around us. We're we're going to rise and we're going to stand not by power and not by might but by his spirit saith the Lord I wish you would stand to your feet right now I wish somebody believe what I'm preaching in this house you don't have to continue in the struggle of sin that you're in today. The blood of Jesus will cleanse you from the top of your head to the sole of your feet. The Spirit of God will liberate you and set you free and give you power over all the enemy. All the enemy. But you got to let the Holy Ghost work in you. Maybe you don't have the Holy Ghost today. Maybe you don't have God's Spirit living inside of you. Maybe you don't have power that, that, that you possess. I tell you today, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost today. You can receive His Spirit today if you'll allow Him to. Look out. Look out and see. What waits for you when you leave here today? When you see the horses, see the chariots, all the people and things that are against you, do not be afraid. Neither be dismayed. Don't tremble. I know it looks bad. Love it when that prophet was surrounded by all those men and chariots and horses. And his helper, Gehazi, said, Master, what are we going to do? We're surrounded. We're going to be defeated. That prophet prayed and said, God, open his eyes. That he may see. And when he opened Gehazi's eyes. Although they were surrounded by an enemy. God was surrounding their enemy. On every side. 
The only way sometimes we can see a way of victory is to see in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Not by what we see. Not by what we feel. But by faith. Knowing that He has given us the victory. I just want to ask somebody in this house today as they start to sing here in a minute. Do you believe that you can be victorious? I want to ask you to start living like it. Victory is not letting sin reign in your mortal body. Victory is not letting grace abound that we may continue in sin. Victory is not continue to struggle with the same things that we walked into church with. I'm not saying those things are going to go away overnight. But there should be a cry in our spirit that says, I want victory. I've got to have liberty. I'm tired of dragging around baggage and chains and all these things that are continuing on me. I got the spirit in me. I'm sick of dragging these things around. That's why scripture says lay aside every weight and every sin that does so easily beset you that you may run this race with patience looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of your faith. Can you lift your hand just for a minute in this house? I want to pray. I'm going to let them sing. Father, I proclaim that we are a victorious people. Not by our hands, not by our might, but by the Spirit of the living God that lives in us. And I pray a special prayer this morning, God, over every person sitting in this room, that God, every circumstance, every battle, every addiction, every chain, every fault, every tactic of the enemy would be brought low today, God. Not because of who we are, but because of who we, you are, God. You are our God and you are our strength. If you need strength today, I want you to lift your hands now and say, Holy Ghost, I want you to work in me. I want you to renew me, restore me, strengthen me today. This is for the lost and lonely. For the broken and the free. This is for those who are hurting. Hoping help is on the way. In these battles and these struggles. Come on, somebody call on his name. When fear is chasing after me. Whatever trouble I am facing. I will lift my hands and sing. Oh, I believe. I believe in miracle power. And I wonder.
you're filled with the Spirit, I want you to come up to the front right now. If you're not filled with the Spirit, I want you to come up here. We're about to close. I know some of you may want to go on, go home. But I'm tired of people hiding behind a mask. Some of you is probably committing fornication right now as we speak. I don't mean that in a bad way. I'm just talking. I know that's blunt. Some of you is probably dealing with, you've probably uh, got addictions of cigarettes or you, you, you drink every now and then or you can't get women off your mind or men off your mind. Come on, we're living in a real world. I, hey, I might have been born at night, but I wasn't born last night. And I don't want the devil getting out of here and saying, I got them. They never moved. They never come to the front. I'm still going to have them when they leave here. Here's what I want us to do. If you, I'm telling you, if you want, if you want to leave free in this house today, I don't care what it is. I don't care how strong it is. I don't care if it's mental uh, depression and garbage that you're dealing with. Hey, they don't have to defeat you. Okay? They don't have to reign over you. We have been given liberty by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hitabosha. Because I know there's times He doesn't work in us But there's still things that need to be healed And healing takes time But I believe God can heal some things quick Some thoughts maybe that's gone on in the past I believe He can do it now I got a lady come up here Give me anybody spirit filled Come over here I got any Holy Ghost filled people in here Come on surround me here Come on brethren Let's gather around brother Danny Devil's a liar. I pray for full freedom in the name of Jesus. God. Freedom in the house. Don't care what it is. Pornography. Don't care what it is. I, I don't care how bad it is. You don't have to hide nothing from me. You ain't got to tell me what you're even raising your hands for. I don't care. I know what the Spirit of God's able to do. I believe in deliverance. He tobo shatama mahaye. Loose her now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Loose her now.
If you leave, if you leave bound, I don't want to get a text message this week uh, telling me about some things that have been reoccurring for weeks. Because here's your opportunity. Here's your opportunity. I want you to come up here with faith. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I want you to walk up here and already say in your mind, I'm leaving this house free. Sing 